this is the starling curve okay and what is the on the x axis you have stretch on the on the y axis you have force this is the Stang, frank starling law what is the frank starling law in layman's term frank starling law is the amount whatever amount of blood within physiological limits of course that ends up in the blood and the in the heart the same is pumped by the by the heart forwards into the arterial side this is what you read how do you translate that into some more intelligible uh, bits of information well when the but the blood the venous return comes back to the heart the blood which is coming now and accumulating during diastole in the ventricle it will tend to stretch the myocardium wouldn't it it will stretch the myocardium the more the blood that comes in the ventricle the more the stretch is this is that stretch okay it's a function of again no surprises here and diastolic volume the more the end diastolic volume the more the stretch right now what does frank starling the scientists what did they discover they discovered that the more stretch you do of course within limits the more stretch you do of the myocardium the more force they ex the, that myocardium exerts during contraction so you stretch it out and when you stretch it it and allow it to contract the higher the stretch the more the force of its contraction okay and hence the more the stroke volume you get it so this is stretching this is more stretching this is by the way the normal resting value above this is when you exercise you are stretching it more the venous return coming back is more i.e the edv is more the stretch is more and when it's more the corresponding force of contraction i.e the stroke volume is more right it's simple uh, he has highlighted the normal values normal value as you know as you remember stroke volume is 70 ml uh, per beat remember uh, and it corresponds to 135 of uh, the value of stretch the uh, edv and diastolic volume 135 you must have read 120 120 130 it's it's a normal variation between between two between various books this is not from brighton this is from uh, silverthorn uh, another very good book uh, okay so this is the slope of the graph this is how the myocardium basically uh, uh, functions uh, in the whole heart in the intact heart okay uh just for the student who go for thread bare details the single myocardial fiber dynamics of stretch and force is different okay you must have uh, uh, uh seen it under frank frank starling law that it goes like this just follow this cursor here it goes like this so from bottom it goes like this like a crescent right but when you look at the the intact heart it goes like this this is the difference don't be confused by it we are right now we are dealing with the intact heart uh, uh, the focus is in the, the, the intact heart and not the single fiber of the myocardium right so this is the starling law basically um, this uh, diagram here uh, gives you um, the uh, uh, an interesting detail the effect of uh, catecholamines so for the same amount of stretch he has used that curve which is the normal curve and then he has plotted a curve in in which the same amount of stretch was being done but in the presence of norepinephrine which is a catecholamine so for each uh, degree of stretch in the presence of norep uh, norepinephrine the amount of stroke volume i.e. the amount of force that the myocardium generated was more in simple terms look at this point a in point a look at the amount of uh, uh, the volume edv is constant edv is this So this point A, but look at where it plots on the blue curve, and look at where it plots on the red curve. It corresponds to a much higher force or stroke volume than it basically uh, uh, achieves under the normal control conditions. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying that norepinephrine or sympathetic stimulation increases stroke volume. 